Uh, what are the best plants and what have we put in here? Right, um, we've put in uh, all native plants into this top tier, which is basically a wildlife pond. Mm -hmm. Native plants are going to attract more wildlife, invertebrates, and um, we've put a range of different uh, species in so that we've got different form, different flowering seasons. So for instance, this is fantastic plant, Flagaris. It's the yellow flower Huge, that you big, see. Yeah, yeah, tall as well. Midsummer, sort of July time. It's really tough and uh, it'll get quite big. It'll, it won't get much taller, but it'll spread. Mm -hmm. That's why we've planted them slightly bigger baskets to allow them to, uh, to increase. And you've juxtaposed it with lots of smaller foliage. Yeah, this sort of plant goes really well with like this, which is marsh marigolds. It's got flat leaves, big also yellow leaves. flowers, but different time of year. Yeah, yeah, the flower is the same colour, but uh, in fact a lot of pond plants are yellow, um, but it's really early, so sort of March time you get this. It's a really useful bit of early colour. Before the trees come into leaf, you often get this flowering underneath yeah. in the dappled shade. And just for a bit of interest, I've put watercress in here, <laughs> which uh, means Actual that we've ed got- edible Yeah, watercress. you can cut this for your sandwiches. Um, it'll look more attractive when the water's cleared. We've only just planted this up. Yeah. If I um, cut it, will it keep yeah, expanding? Yeah, well, you want to keep cutting this because right. if you don't, it'll sort of go over. The more you cut it, the more it'll come. So, uh, so that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, down in... Uh, Why not? <laughs> <laughs> down in the other basket, because we've put these in quite big baskets, mm. uh, we've got uh, Lesser Spearwort, which is a member of the uh, Buttercup family. Ranunculus. That looks very British to me, it sort does, of tiny yeah. flowers on, on big spindly plants. Five yellow uh, flowers, just like a miniature buttercup. Mm. There's also greater spearwort, which is a much bigger plant. This one's fine for a, a smaller pond. Um, this is a nice plant, cuckoo flowers. Sometimes see it in mm. ditches by the side of the road. It grows in, in little groups um, and uh, it's a really delicate flower in spring. Um, and again, you've mixed with a low, low spreading plant across this the water. This is called Brooklime, and it's a, it's a really good spreading plant. This and Watermint uh, are two of the best to just cover the ground. So again, that one will just creep all over mm. the basket. Watermint edible like normal mint? Uh, Watermint? Mm, best not. I <laughs> can't actually say I've ever tried it. Yeah, the watercress is nice though, by the way. The watercress <laughs> is good, yes. Yeah, so that. that's the aquatic plant. Yeah. So after heavy rain, the water will come through and into here. So it means this is going to be soggy when it rains, but there are going to be long periods yeah, where this is, this is going to be a bit dry. This is a bit more of a challenge. So water plants are quite easy to care for because as long as you keep that full of water, they're going to be irrigated. In fact, the great thing about pond plants, you don't have to water them. Mm. Uh, they just sit there growing. And um, down here, we've got what we call a stormwater planter. So it's irrigated when there's water coming the downpipe and overflowing out of here. But at other times when it's not rained, it can be really quite droughty. Mm. So you need a, a really special sort of plant. Um, these plants are the sort that will tolerate flooding, but then they'll dry out and they won't die in drought. So mm -hmm. sedge, all the sedge family are pretty tough. This one is probably one of the best. It's pendulous sedge. You sometimes see the flowers coming out in later summer and hanging over. So that will go quite quite big. That's, that can grow into a, a really big plant. What colour flowers? Um, their sedge plant uh, flowers aren't particularly uh, showy. They're just little brown things. Oh, that's almost little like tassels. Tassels. Yeah, type tiny things. Yeah, tiny little flowers. But it's an interesting form. And as I say, it's absolutely cast mm. iron this in fact you can't kill it <laughs> even if this dries out this will, grow, go. this will live uh, ferns are good in rain guns um i think it, of ferns in shade yeah and, and obviously we're often going to be able this is going to be bright sunshine or total lack of yeah, sunshine yeah this this uh this is a, a soft shield fern which is one of the uh, ones it just sort of sits there doing its ferny thing but it can dry out a bit if it was too dry, it would curl up and go brown, but it will probably come back mm -hmm. from the base. So again, uh, a really useful plant. And then the last one, I put this in, uh, it's a bit of an unusual one, it's sea thrift. It is what I think it is. Yeah, I think of that yeah. on sea cliffs in mm. Cornwall and Scotland and yeah. places like that, and I thought they needed salt. I'm not sure that they need salt so much as they tolerate it. Right. So again, it's a real tough plant. It's a survivor, mm. it'll grow on cliffs, it'll survive droughts and I put it in here thinking well it really lifts it with its flower 
but it, it's tough. So a more luscious sort of leaf. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a really lovely plant actually, mm. and and this one is a, you know, it's a slightly bigger flower variety than our native one, but it's still mm. what I would call uh, on the edge of native. So uh, it it qualifies for inclusion. Here. <laughs> There's a couple here we ran out of space for as well. Yeah, but, uh, um, worth a mention. I bought these in because this is a is a great plant actually. Uh, another one that if you plant it in a garden, it'll just uh, seed itself around. It's called. Um, Alcamilla mollis, ladies mantle, and um, many people will know this growing out of paths at the edge of beds because mm. it really needs very little soil. So again, it's a, it's a great rain garden plant because, uh, as I say, you've got to have this extreme tolerance of conditions from wet to dry. And this, I sort of think of rainforests, a bit like the ferns, yeah, sort of thing, yeah, very dark the, areas maybe. Yeah, I, I brought this along um, because I thought it might be useful. We haven't really got room for it, um, but this is one of the. Uh, um, entire leaf ferns rather than a dissected one so uh, there's a couple of um, natives uh, which have this sort of appearance and again it will tolerate being underwater for short periods but mm. it can dry out as well so um, it, it gives a bit of variety but not enough room <laughs> So if you're interested in brightening up an area of your garden around the drain pipe and creating a lovely little wildlife garden like this, then click on the link and find out how easy it is to do it at your place.